You know, it always perplexes me why these older Toyotas still hold their value so well. Not even just the SUVs and the trucks, but the cars. A few months ago, my friend Ben bought this 2011 Toyota Avalon with 43,000 miles for over $20,000. Why are they still so expensive? So this Avalon in particular belongs to my friend Ben. It's a 2011 base with 47,000 miles and it's painted in classic silver. This one I would say is quite literally a time capsule because it is in such mint condition. The original sticker price for a base Avalon in 2011 was just around $36,000. Back in its heyday, the Avalon competed with the likes of the Ford Taurus, Buick LaCrosse, and other front drive near luxury sedans, because this is the type of car you want to be coddled in luxury, but you don't want to look like it. The first generation Avalon came out for the 1995 model year to compete with the likes of the Nissan Maxima and the Ford Taurus. It was larger than its smaller sibling, the Camry, but it was still based on the same platform. The first and second generation Avalon were available in a six passenger configuration, so you could get a bench seat in the front with a column shifter. That's cool. Old school is cool. This marks the third generation of Avalon. Now, of course, it was bigger and more powerful, and it made up to 268 horsepower. These first were available in four different trim levels, the XL, Touring, XLS, and Limited. Toyota loaded the Limited trim with Lexus-like features like ventilated seats, a smart key access system, JBL sound, and so many other wonderful creature comforts. Toyota slightly revised the Avalon in 2008, gave it a slightly different front and rear end, a six-speed automatic transmission, and different wheels. The very last phase of the Avalon, this one was released for the 2011 model year. Of course, it had a newer front and rear end with LED tail lights and optional HID headlights, and the interior was heavily revamped for only being a refresh. Toyota also simplified the trim levels of the Avalon by only offering a base and a limited trim. So I know Toyota hasn't been one to offer many wheel options, but you could choose between two different wheels for your 2011 Avalon. The base models like this have these 17 inch alloy wheels, and the limited trim got a different design multi-spoke alloy wheel. But also, look at how big this car is. Look at that ass. And to hustle around that big ass, Toyota put a good engine under the hood. Their world-renowned 2GR FE. So this engine was found in so many different Toyotas. It's a 3.5 liter V6. In this application, it makes 268 horsepower and 248 pound-feet of torque. Toyota claimed the zero to 60 time for this big car. It's only about 3,800 pounds, 6.6 seconds, which is very respectable for a grandma's car. But this is a dual overhead cam engine. It also uses a timing chain, not a timing belt. So that's one advantage of the 2GR series of engines. And as for fuel economy, once again, for this being such a big car, Toyota claimed 20 in the city, 29 on the highway, and 23 combined. Now, you could probably see well into the, well, not well into the 30s, but you could probably break the 30 MPG mark on the highway. So there's two ways to pop the trunk in your 2011 Avalon in the base trim. You can either push and hold the button on the key fob, which, wow, I like that it opens more than just like a little pop. That's nice. Or you can pull a little lever inside the car. On models with the smart key access system, there will be a little button here that you could pop to. But the trunk is very big, as I'd expect in a full-size, not luxury, but a full-size premium sedan like this. 14.4 cubic feet of volume. The only downside is you can't drop the rear seats, but you do have a little pass through. I also appreciate because this is such a big car, Toyota gives you a full-size spare tire and it matches all the other wheels. That's really nice. The first thing that you will notice as you get into the back of this Avalon is that this is not how far the door goes. It goes almost 90 degrees. So you have an excellent amount of room to get inside the car. And the driver's seat 
is in my seating position. I'm five foot nine and I have great headroom. Legroom is, oh my God, like a foot of legroom. I can fit my feet under the seats. There's no third climate control zone, but there's two rear air vents. There's also this big armrest. So of course you can fit three abreast. I think three adults could fit back here. And the center hump is pretty much non-existent, so it'd be really comfortable. But there's two cup holders on the armrest as well. One of the things that I remember from my childhood is one of the commercials when the 2011 Avalon first came out because they advertised reclining rear seats. That's dope. The new Toyota Avalon. It's one smooth ride. It has lots of space for you and all your things. I got mine with voice activated navigation. So we can get to the city. There's no finer way to travel. The new Toyota Avalon. Comfort is back. I would love to just ride back here and be so comfortable. And the material is soft and comfortable. Of course, this one has low mileage, so it looks like it's immaculate. But even one with 150K looks just like this. There's also two map pockets back here. Ben put LEDs in here, just like me. I love my LEDs. And this is where the cloudiness of this car, good cloudiness, continues so because this one is a base this is the key fob toyota's normal you know normal blade key fob and no push button start but you can barely hear it running and this one has a four spoke leather wrap steering wheel there's also a plethora of buttons on the steering wheel too on the left side there's a bunch of audio and bluetooth controls and on the right side there's climate control so you can adjust the temperature put it on auto and just turn the climate all the way off this also has voice control and there's a little information screen. It's not that big, it just shows basic information, mostly fuel economies. But as we glance up to the gauges, they just look so premium. There's a temperature gauge, a tack, a speedo, and a fuel gauge. This is a perfect car because the seats are so comfortable. It's an eight-way power driver seat with two-way lumbar, and the passenger seat is also an eight-way with two-way lumbar. Of course, they're not extremely supportive, but both of them are heated. In the limited model, you could get cooled seats. But as standard equipment, you have memory seats for two people that control the seat and the mirrors. The dash was completely redone for the 2011 model year, which is surprising for just a refresh because two years later, they introduced the fourth generation Avalon. But of course, this one is a base, so it doesn't have the optional navigation system, but this one does have a really nice JBL synthesis audio system. Really nice bass, even at high volume, but no screens or anything besides the little display on here, but it does do Bluetooth audio as well. But under all that, you have dual zone climate control, very simple controls. I really appreciate how simple everything is in here. Nothing is down below. There's plenty of storage underneath. You could fit CDs, two really big cup holders, another storage compartment over here. The armrest is also really nicely padded. There's two levels. There's this little tray at the top and then at the bottom, it actually goes pretty deep. So if you're first getting into one of these Avalons the, and driving them, you'll be shocked with how smooth it is. I am, you know, I back to back drove this and my 99 Passport coming up to film this. And I'm honestly, blown away by how smooth it is because it has new tires on it again i think 47,000 miles so it's pretty much i mean to me it's like a new car it's so smooth even just turning it on the 2gr and the six speed perfect combination let's see how the power is it picks up at like 3500 rpm it's really smooth that was not well that was more of a roll but as we get onto the highway, we'll see how this 2GR FE does. It's such a buttery smooth engine. In the RAV4 V6, it's kind of a sleeper. In this, I wouldn't call the Avalon a sleeper, but 6.6 6 seconds to 60 is not bad for a big car like this. The ride on the highway, the faster you go, the smoother it gets. The engine is so quiet. I can't feel this thing shift at all. The surface that I'm on is this concrete because we're on a bridge right now. And of course, you'll hear that. But on asphalt, I bet this is whisper quiet on the highway. Right now, I'm only doing 55, but there's not a lot of 
uh, wind noise either. It's just such a solid car. No queak queaks, <laughs> no creaks or rattles. The dash, everything you feel is nicely padded and nice quality. Like it just feels of quality. This is why I think quality and package wise, this is one of the one of the better uh, one of the better <laughs> one of the better eras of Avalon. At least in my opinion. <laughs> Let's do a bit of a pull. So smooth. Of course, it's not like snappy like a GS350. Because I think the GS350 in 08 was about the same size as this. But GSs have smaller rear seats for being bigger cars. This feels light on its feet for being such a big car. And this is not a corner carver at all. Because... There's not a lot of road feel, but I'm not complaining about it because if I'd be driving across the country or up and down the coast, you could just zone out and drive this for hours. We can test the passing power. <laughs> because it's a little bit damp, there's a bit of torque steer, ever so slight. Actually, this is a game now. Take a shot how many times I say this is so smooth, because it is. If you drive one of these, I'm sure if you don't say it out loud, you'll probably say it in your head. But one thing about these that makes you feel or notice the difference between this and an actual full-on luxury sedan is the heft of the overall car, even just opening the doors or the whole ride and the steering. Toyota makes this car feel lighter than it is because I think about 3,800 pounds and it doesn't feel like it. Like I'm driving this and I feel like I'm weight-wise driving something like a Camry. Let's see here. Fast, the smooth power, effortless. And even when the, our engine's at 6,500, wow, someone backing up. But even when the engine's at 6,500 RPM, it's pretty quiet. Toyota mutes the engine noise. They put a lot of sound deadening in here. And going around corners, like I said, this feels light and the steering is so light and numb. If you try to drive it athletically, there's not that much communication. But again, you can't complain about that in an Avalon because you don't want the road, you don't want to be feeling the road every single time you get on the highway. Let's see, pass. And it sounds good and it really gets up to speed fast merging is no problem whatsoever and that my friends was a glimpse at the third generation and the third refresh of the toyota avalon i think i don't want to say the best gen of avalon that could be up to people can yeah, debate in the comments it's one of the best generations actually I think this was the generation that started the more athletic Avalon because the two Avalons before this were kind of slow. But enough of me rambling. Let me know if you guys have an Avalon in the comments below because I read every single comment. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, peeps.